Hello everyone, so welcome back to my tutorials. Now that we've covered frame by frame animation, we'll learn how to do twinning. So as you can see at the bottom, frame by frame means whenever you want an object to go from point A to point B, it will be necessary to draw the objects in between. As for twinning, you would just draw where the initial position is and where it's going to be headed. And when you play, it will draw the objects in between for you. So here I'll demonstrate the example of what I mean by that. At the bottom is frame by frame where the objects are drawn one by one. At the top I just did one object here and the uh, second destination. And uh, if we were to play this, this is how it would look like. So as you can see, when I enable the, uh, the onion skin here, which allows you to see the, uh, the previous drawn images, and once you expand that, you can see that Twinning has done the drawings in between automatically for me. And uh, when you were to play that, it appears much smoother. So at certain times, twinning is necessary, and at some at certain times, frame by frame will be necessary, depending on the animation. So now that we've covered both of these, let's get started on creating that bouncing ball using twinning. Okay guys, so before we get started, I'd just like to point out that we'll keep this uh, bouncing ball animation extremely simple. So let's proceed by clicking on Action Script 3.0. On the first layer will be the background, so let's name that background. We'll need one more for the ball. On the background layer, create a very simple floor, such as a line for now. And um, for the whole animation, we'll need approximately 15 frames, so select the outline here for both the layers and hit F5. Okay, um, make sure that your frame by frame is set to 24. If it's not there, click twice on it, 24, and enter. Again, this will mean that every second will consist of 24 frames. So once you have the background layer, lock that because we would not need to edit that anymore. Go back to ball, select the circle tool. We want the outline to be black and the inside to be filled with white. If you'd like to make your ball proportional, hold shift and drag. One thing uh, new I'll introduce to you here is that as you animate, if uh, there's a grid like that in the ball, it means that the object itself is editable, meaning that if you were to accidentally pull the strings here and move the inside as well, uh, you'll be editing it. But if you don't want that, we're just undoing it here, going back to the original, uh, select and drag on top of the object. If you hit F8 and make sure that this is graphic, and uh, you can name it here too, so let's name this ball and you click OK. This object now is locked, meaning that it's no longer editable from the outside. If you did need to edit the shape of the ball, however, you could always click twice on it to the editing inside. So from the outside, it will be locked once again. But we won't get too much into that right now, so we'll just undo that. Make sure that it's back to normal. As long as it's a, it's a shape now, it's a symbol shape, it's no longer editable, so we'll just keep it as it is. One thing I'd like to point out as well is that the circle here means that um, if you were to rotate the ball, let's say, the axis is in the center, so it will rotate from, from the center. If you were to move this, however, let's say here, the ball will be rotating from that axis. So what, where would this need to be if you were to create a bouncing ball? It would have to be at the bottom. This way, you could always add a squash, or if you need to rotate, it will rotate like that. Okay, so now that we have our shape together and our axis center at the bottom, we can proceed with the animation. So we'll create our bouncing ball with three major placements and two in between to create that extra squash and stretch uh, movement. So the first frame it will be here at the top. When it will reach the ground, it will be the same shape, but 
we will make some uh, squashing and then we will stretch back to normal before reaching the top and uh, the last frame will consist of it being at the top once again so let's do that we already have our first frame once it's around here our ball will be at the bottom and again I'm clicking F6 to create new frames here we want the ball to be squished so remember as as much as uh, squash it down you will need to stretch it on the opposite direction in order to make sure that you maintain the same volume so it doesn't seem so bad and then before it starts rising up again um, I mean in the air we want to make sure that it's back to the normal position so what we'll do is we'll actually stretch this out a bit click on anywhere in between the frames containing this shape such as in the middle drag it here so this is our initial position when it's reached the ground this is where it's stretched down back to normal and we'll repeat that step again by selecting the initial frame and bringing it up and bringing it all the way here so as you can see we have a ball very top hit the bottom stretching down stretching back up and rising up okay so if we were to just to play this it's like a frame by frame animation but we wanted to make it more interesting so we'll add the tweening so the way you do this is you select all of your frames within the layer that you want it to be tween right click and create classic tween whenever you see the arrow here it means that frames have been drawn in between automatically for you so as you can see it's doing exactly what I, I planned it to do and it's um, there's no arrow here meaning that there's no movement so we'll just drag this here and adjust our frames according to the type of timing that we want it to be so we need to make sure that this is at the very center and we'll just play around with this so something like that seems okay so if we were to play it click enter okay so as you can see the timing here is a bit off it's a bit slow so maybe 15 frame is a bit too much so we'll actually uh, push this back a little make it so it's really fast in the uh, bouncing stretching of it and uh, something like that we don't need this frame so we'll select these right click and remove frames so let's try it out now yeah doesn't seem so bad the other interesting thing that I wanted to point out here, uh, which will make your animation much more realistic, is that when a ball is falling down, it never falls down at a constant space of speed. Basically, it starts falling slower to faster, and then rising, it goes from faster to slower. The way you would achieve this is if you click anywhere within the arrow, and you see the ease here, if you click in the negative, let's say negative 100 is the maximum. What this will do is that it will actually make the ball going from slow to fast. Okay? Here we don't need any of that because it's only one frames. But rising from bottom to top, it will go from fast to slow. So now instead of negative, it will be at positive 100, which is the maximum. Going back here, um, if you ever click on the pencil, it shows you what's happening. So it's going from slow to fast. Then here, it's going from fast to slow. And if you ever need to edit that, you could always do so. But we won't need that right now. So we'll just click OK. <clears throat> so if you were to play this, Control and Enter. Look at that. We have our very simple bouncing ball. And there we go. Um, you can apply this twinning um, into anything such as a, a pendulum going from fast to slow, bouncing ball, 
or combining with frame by frame as we did here in order to, to achieve your uh, realistic animation. Hi guys, while we're at it, I wanted to show you how you would approach this technique in animating a pendulum. So once you have your object drawn, well first click on F8 and combine this into a graphic. Hit OK. And um, now you select your object, click on the uh, transform tool in order to give you the option to move the axis right where it's supposed to be. Now in order to animate your pendulum, we'll go from here to the center and then it will rise up from the other side, go back to the center and to the initial position in order to create a, uh, a loop for your animation. So let's go ahead and do that. First frame, so hit your transform tool and uh, bring it at the very top. Go to frame 5, F6, bring it at the bottom, go to frame 10, F6, bring it at the top, and then frame 15, F6, actually we could uh, steal this frame for frame 15 where it's back at the bottom, and then steal this frame and bring it at the top. So hopefully we have you have this movement going on. If you want to make sure that everything is symmetrical, you can always click on the onion skin where it allows you to, to view the uh, previous and uh, after movement of your animation. You always drag this in order to expand the view. Um, so at frame 1 is here, at frame 20, it's the same peak, so it's good. Um, right in the center, yeah, everything seems to be fairly symmetrical, so it should work fine. Um, okay, so you, once you have that, just um, select these, create plastic, and uh, view your animation. So it's looping, but it's not. It doesn't have the uh, the, the speed that it needs to have in order to create create the realistic uh, gravity effect of uh, easing out and easing in. So. When it's going from top to the middle, we'll be going from um, slow to fast. I believe slow to fast was minus 100. So let's make sure by clicking on this. Yes, yeah, so this is slow to fast. And then when it's from here to up, we'll go from fast to slow. So again, that will be 100. And then you just have to repeat this step. Slow to fast, minus 100. And again, this will be 100. And uh, there we go. Control enter. And you have your pendulum. So now you know the basics of animating anything. So I would like to get some animation done by you. So. I would appreciate if you would uh, post your animation and I will make sure to upload that on my like. Uh, best of luck and in the next animation we'll learn something new. Thanks again.